Greetings, and welcome to episode 42. In this episode, we'll be talking about the narcissist, close cousin to the sociopath. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you about the techniques they use and why they use them. Uh, yeah, so if you're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, the narcissist. What is a narcissist? First of all, a narcissist is someone that has to look good in every situation no matter what, even at the expense of others, even if it was their fault. <coughs> Excuse me. That is to say, if a certain situation came up and it all fell apart and it was the narcissist's fault, and they know it's their fault, they're going to go out of their way to make it so it's not their fault and put the blame on somebody else for whatever reason. That's how narcissists work. That's, the, that's their MO. But they use several different techniques to accomplish this. I told you one of the techniques of the sociopath, which is triangulation. Well, narcissists use the same technique only differently instead of just putting the person down to belittle them and push them out of the circle the narcissist does it in terms of well did you see all the rest of the stuff they messed up and so everyone's got it in their head that you're the screw up and obviously it's your fault and they don't ever have to come out and say that whatever situation is your fault as long as everybody believes you're a screw up it's going to be intimated that it was all your fault That, to me, I think comes from partially the ego, but partially you have to be trained into that. Like, <coughs> excuse me, like at some point in your life, usually when you're a child, or when they're when they're children they're made to feel like everything is their responsibility everything is their fault whether it's your fault or not it's your fault so from then on they're of the mindset that it's 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 not going to be my fault anymore and they will go around the rest of their literally the rest of their life and no matter the situation unless you were there to view it or videotape it it wasn't their fault and sometimes even when you were there they'll find a way out of it find a way that it wasn't and couldn't have been their fault <clears throat> and when all else fails they'll either flip the script and point out your failings or they will change the subject altogether To bring up your failings and even if it had nothing to do with the situation just some way like you say I can't believe you popped the tire well I can't believe you ate all the cookies well what the hell did the cookies have to do with the tire not the point the narcissist is just trying to take the focus off their whatever they did wrong to put it on what you did wrong Also, they, I think it has to do with guilt, not wanting to feel guilty. You know how you, when you do something wrong, you have a tendency to feel guilty about it. Well, the narcissist doesn't want to feel guilty. Doesn't like that negative emotion, that negative vibe. And they know you're not going to feel guilty because they know you didn't really do anything. But if they can get everyone else to believe you did it, that's just fine with them. You're not going to feel guilty. You may get a little angry or really angry, but you're not going to feel guilty. And you have the perfect defense because you really didn't do it. So it doesn't matter if they think you did it as long as they don't think the narcissist did it. 
things to look for when you're arguing with someone and they change the subject to something that has nothing to do with what you're arguing about. It's because they know they're wrong in that situation. They're just refusing to accept responsibility for their actions in that situation. So, uh, it could be anything, you know. <coughs> but it'll usually be, if it's important enough to redirect blame, then it was important enough to bring the topic up in the first place. And they're going to bring up something equally uh, as or more devastating than what they've just done to you. And they're going to get any, everybody they can in on it because that's going to make them look like the person that's in the right. Because everybody that's now turned on you could be just two, three extra people could be more than that but regardless those extra people are viewing it from the information they received from the narcissist and the narcissist didn't tell them that the fight was about A the narcissist told them that the fight was about B and so they're coming at you from B and you have no defense against B because you did do B or whatever B happens to be you know that well I got no argument for that and they know you don't have an argument for that. But once they've gotten everybody to turn on you, it's hard to say we weren't even fighting about B, we were fighting about A. Because now it doesn't matter. Now everybody's already mad at you and nobody wants to hear what you have to say. Or if they do take the time to listen, it's only uh, it's more like going through the motions. They don't really care what you have to say. They just want to be perceived as being fair and balanced kind of like Fox News but people that can't own up to their own wrongdoing and do that that's what they're called they're called narcissists <coughs> excuse me they just have to look good in every situation oh they don't mind taking the blame for little stuff but when it's something big, they're more afraid of what they will look like after everyone finds out than they are even worried about what actually happened. And it's, it's really, really hard to get a narcissist to own up to it. And if you get them to own up to it, by the time they own up to it, The season has passed, so to speak. The problem is blown over. Any guilt associated with, ex with, with taking responsibility for your actions at that point ha is dissipated and gone. So, sure, I can own up to it now, because now it doesn't matter. Now I don't feel guilty about it. And this could be days, weeks, months, years later that they own up to it. Because now the moment's passed. They don't have any problem owning up to it now. No guilt associated with it. No uh, negative energy. Not only will they own up to it, they'll more than likely apologize. Because now they don't have anything to gain or lose from telling the truth. Because nobody has been so long that nobody's going to say anything. Like, oh, you did that? They're going to be like, oh, I remember that. Cool. Well, it's good you owned up to it, is what they'll say. <coughs> and like I keep saying in most of my videos is, we weren't put here to be perfect. Each and every human being on this planet was born perfect. We weren't put here to experience perfection. We were, here to, we were put here to experience life. And if you're running from your deeds you're not really experiencing life to its fullest. You're spending most of your time hiding. And if you're hiding, that means there's a fair amount of ego in front of there because you need something to shield yourself from reality and the real you, the one that makes mistakes. 
and this false image of perfection. I don't do anything wrong. My shit smells like strawberry fluff. Well, that could very well be the case, but everyone makes mistakes. I don't care what your poop smells like. Uh, it is the mark of a strong person that can own up to their mistakes and own up to take res take responsibility for their actions. I have no problem taking responsibility for my actions. I just, I'm the kind of person that says, just explain to me what it was I did. I have no problem saying I'm sorry. I have no problem saying, yeah, I did that. What I have a problem with is just because you're mad, I'm going to buckle under. Just because you're mad and say, I'm sorry, that's not going to work. But I will give you the chance to explain, okay, what was it I did? Okay, I did that. I apologize. Or, no, <laughs> wasn't me. <laughs> Whichever the case. And people people seem to think that and especially narcissists are the first ones to say, Well, you think you're better than me? <laughs> Which the translation to that is, like I said a couple videos ago, the translation to someone that says what do you think you're better than me? The direct translation to that is, I think you're better than me. And you've caused me to, to feel negative towards you because of that. For whatever reason. If you make yourself look better than a narcissist, they will do whatever it takes to look better than you, even if that means getting you in trouble, tripping you up, making you lose your job, whatever it is they will do whatever it takes to look good which is the whole point of the term narcissist it's just it's described as self-love narcissism but I would more closely associate it with what would you pursue? Uh, because you can't say perfectionism because a perfectionist goes out of their way to be perfect to be perfect not to be perceived as perfect but to be perfect in their own eyes they really don't care what you think <laughs> a narcissist is different it doesn't matter what they think it's all about what you think if you think that they're okay then they're okay. They're going to go by what you say. You think I'm perfect? Oh, I'm not just going to, I'm not going to go around discouraging that thought. <laughs> <coughs> to the point where they actually forget that they have done considerable damage on several occasions. And they will, they will forget. And then when you bring it up, it's, what do you think, you're better than me? <laughs> Translation, I think you're better than me. My favorite. Why are you bringing up old stuff? Um, just happened yesterday. <laughs> just happened yesterday. It's not really old stuff yet. <laughs> <coughs> uh, or owning up to stuff but doing it in such a way where you can tell that they're not really owning up to it and it's just to shut you up and then they're going to go behind your back and pretty much talk smack about you in that situation and they're even going to tell the people that you that they gave a fake apology. Well, I just said I was sorry just to get through the fight, whatever. And God forbid if they tell someone what really happened <coughs> and that person lets it out to the general population, meaning your clique of friends and family or whatever it is you, you hang out with, 
whoever lets that secret out, it's no law. It's now now they've got well. It's not my fault she told you that. <laughs> wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. You're going on about her telling me instead of the fact that you did it. No, no, it's about you did it. It's not about that she told me. She did the right thing. You did the wrong thing. I'm not going to get down on her for your actions. It's never going to happen that way. Likewise, if I do something wrong and... I tell somebody and they go and tell somebody it's not their fault it's my fault for a having done the thing in the first place and B having told someone about it can't very well get mad at the trees for growing leaves now can you but I don't know Subtle ways to tell that you're around a narcissist? Are they always, I mean, constantly trying to sidestep blame, even if you saw them do the, the wrong thing? You know, you saw them perform whatever act, and it was wrong. Everybody would agree that it was wrong. But they immediately set about to, to, to place the blame elsewhere, even though they know you saw them do it. Or immediately switch it to something else so that they can put the blame on you or someone else. Sometimes they like to put the blame on someone that's not in the room because the person that's not in the room can't defend themselves. And in that moment, wow, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty deep. <coughs> Excuse me, in that moment, you kind of become complicit if you go along with it. You're like helping them because you just want closure on that situation. And if the, the narcissist is convincing enough, they can convince you that, oh, that was that was Johnny did that. That was Johnny. And it's Johnny's fault because Johnny told me to do this here. Johnny's not here to defend himself. So you're like, well, okay, well, you just stop doing that and I'm going to go talk to Johnny. And by the time you go talk to Johnny and come back, the narcissist is gone and probably won't talk to you for days, weeks, months, just because they know they're busted. And if you do happen to catch up with them before their allotted cooldown period, because they will allow a cooldown period, if you catch up with them before that cooldown period, they'll have a clever excuse why, well, I, well, I could have sworn Johnny said that. And again, Johnny won't be there. And if Johnny was there with you, it'll be, you sure you didn't tell me to do that? <laughs> and I'm not saying that's exactly what they will say, but it'll go along those lines. <clears throat> Another type to stay away from, the narcissist. Because everyone likes to get closure. That's the whole point. People like to get closure on the situation. And it's not, the narcissist sees it about assessing blame. I see it as simply taking responsibility for your actions. It's not about blame. We both were there. We both know what happened. Why is it about blame? Why can't you just say, yeah, I did that? It's about blame when I don't know who did it. If I don't know who did it, or you don't know who did it and nobody knows who did it then it's blame but if I was there and I saw you or heard it from somebody that did see you and was there that's no longer blame that's me coming to you for for closure in that situation for I need you to what's the word I'm looking for I can't think of the word, but yeah, that's what I need from you. I need closure on that situation, and when I'm coming up to you to ask you, or to ask the narcissist, the narcissist is going to say, why are you blaming me? Well, it's not blame. I know you did it. It's about getting you to take responsibility. We both know you did it. Just own up to it. Why do I get the blame? Why do I have to get the blame? Why can't you have some of the blame? 
I wasn't there. Why do I have to have some of the blame? <laughs> why is it blame? Why is it why isn't it just you taking responsibility? And if I wasn't there, how am I supposed to take responsibility? Well, Steve was there too. Uh Steve was in a different part of the area watching you. Just got to look good. For no reason. For no reason. Because to them it's okay that everybody else is wrong. But it's not okay that they're wrong. God forbid if they get found out to be not perfect. But yeah, narcissism. Not, not really a friendly disorder. And it's very easy to overcome. It's just a fear. An unnecessary fear. Of how will it make me look? What if they lose respect for me? Blah, 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 blah. But it, it's okay in their mind if you're wrong and they lose respect for you. See, when they tell, when they, when you do something and you're in front of them and they call you out on it, they're not blaming you and they, they realize they're not blaming you. They're just trying to get you to take responsibility. But if you flip the script and they did the, the thing that was wrong and you're trying to get them to take responsibility, then it's blame. When blame is something you do when you don't know who did it. Then you go around blaming people. You can't blame me for your actions. That's what that means. I can't blame you for my actions, but I certainly can get you to take responsibility for yours. Or at least try to. And changing the subject, yeah, that, that doesn't cut it. It's trying to switch it so now it's a topic that I'm in the right, or at least not in the wrong. But, uh, yeah. Just because you're not in the wrong, and it doesn't even have to be about right or wrong. It just could be about, you know how we all set these personal rules for ourselves. And we kind of, in in our little ways interspecies communications it's not even sometimes verbal but we get the point across that we don't like certain things going on in our lives and sometimes it's just that simple that maybe a line was crossed or maybe when it, it could even be something like a small incident that really wasn't a blame or even take responsibility for it was a I'm upset at this moment and now I want the moment to pass and you're dragging it out because I got mad and you don't like feeling like I'm blaming you but it's not about blame it's about taking responsibility for your actions and in that moment when it's just like one of those little personal rules breached or whatever it's not even about taking responsibility and then to not let it blow over but instead flip the script and turn it to something else a subject that well he's got no argument for this granted I have no argument for that <laughs> I probably do but I'm just not going to get into it because I see that it's a game and I'm not going to play the game It's where head games come in. This is how this is how it works for narcissists. Yeah, I stabbed your brother, but remember that time you ate the last pork chop? That was wrong, man. That was wrong. <laughs> or flip it. You're the one that did the, the small thing. Or they're the, they're the ones that did the small thing, and you did something bigger, but was kind of out of your control. But that's still going to get thrown up there. 
and it's not even something that needs to have blame or responsibility assigned to it. It's something that cannot be sidestepped whatsoever. <clears throat> and if you're viewing this and you're, you're, you're understanding what I'm saying, you can probably pick out the narcissists in your life. You can also pick out if you're the narcissist in your life. It, it, does, it doesn't have to be that way. Nobody's perfect. If you're the narcissist, understand that nobody's perfect. And that when, I, when somebody comes to you with a complaint of something you've done to them or something your actions affected them in some way, they're not looking to assess blame or place blame. They're just looking for validation in that situation. They need you to, to own up, take responsibility for your actions, and that's it. it can, you can only blame someone if you don't know who did it. Blame is like to accuse. If you're accusing someone of something, you didn't, you don't know for sure if they did it. But when you're just trying to get validation of a situation and get closure, that's completely different. I'm not blaming you. Because I know you did it. You know you did it. It's not blame at that point. But the narcissist will always see it that way. They'll always see it as, well, you're blaming me. And it's never their fault. Sometimes when they absolutely cannot get out of it, then they'll take the blame. But even if it's a situation they caused, instead of letting you focus in on their actions, they'll focus in on your reaction to what they did. You're not going to blame me. It's not about blame. It's about, it's about getting you to take responsibility for your actions in that situation. I know what you did. You know what you did. I'm not denying my part in it. Why are you denying your part in it? Like, your actions have no effect on anything. But if my actions have an effect on something, I'm pretty sure yours did too. Why is it like pulling teeth just to get you to own up to it? Like I said, you could probably trace it all the way back to childhood where they were made to feel like everything was their responsibility and their fault. And they decided one day that it was never going to be their responsibility or their fault ever again. But they take it to the extreme. Whether or not it's their fault, it's not their fault. Even if they know it's their fault, you better not come and talk to them about it. Because, for whatever reason, they're not going to let you get that validation. They're not going to let you... It's almost as if, if I don't validate their complaint by owning up to it and taking responsibility, I can say it never happened. Because I can keep just saying, whatever, change the subject, whatever, change the subject. Flip the script. Now I'm poking at your... Well, you left your coffee cup on the table. Well, what does that have to do with anything? That's not the point if it has to do with anything. You left your coffee cup on the table. And as long as they don't validate your point, they can say in their mind it never happened. Never happened. And I'm perfect. Because they let it go. If they didn't keep on it and get the validation, obviously it wasn't that important and it didn't happen. 
And if it wasn't that important, then I'm not going to put it in the records. Only they do that no matter how big the situation is. They're not going to give you your validation. They're not going to own up to anything. And it's not going on their files as something they've done wrong. Which is detrimental to any type of relationship. Friendship, co-workers, uh, married, with your parents. It could be one of your parents. It makes you not want to be around them because they just you know how it's going to turn out. Friends, you don't want to be around them because you know you know how it's going to turn out. If something were to happen, they're going to double back. To make themselves look good. They're going to distance themselves from you. Well, I was, you know, yeah. And they're going to throw out some answer to not have to validate that situation as them being a part of it. And God forbid if they were like the integral part of it, like the, the cause of it, oh yeah, they're going to distance themselves completely. And if you do somehow get them to to own up to it, it's a half-assed own up to it, and why are you ganging up on me? <laughs> so there are several different stages, several different techniques they have to sidestep validation is what I'm going to call it because it's not blame if everybody knows you did it even you <laughs> it's not blame at that point now the people are just seeking validation and how do they get that validation by you taking responsibility for your actions and the more you fight off giving validation the hope for the narcissist is that they'll just give up and leave but God forbid if you leave, leave, just leave that alone, leave that topic alone. But don't go anywhere, God damn it. <coughs> yeah, that, I could see how that would get real old real quick. Hmm. <laughs> oh, close cousin to the sociopath. <laughs> But the sociopath does it slightly differently. They'll be like, yeah, so? <laughs> you get your validation, but you're not getting much else other than that. Because remember, the sociopath is the leader of the clique, and as the leader is infallible. <laughs> Whereas the narcissist is probably not the leader of the clique, but is not going to give validation either. And if they do, it's kind of a backhanded validation. I did that, but you, only because you did this. What? Because I left my coffee cup on the table? You slashed my tires? What? <laughs> and they'll, they'll stitch together unrelated incidences. And a lot more of them, or a bigger one than what you're bringing up, to take the focus off of A and put it on to B. And now you're arguing about B, and that's exactly what they wanted. And they know that there's no way for you to argue through B, so they keep it on B. Until you remember, wait a minute, we were fighting about A, let's get back on to A. <laughs> the narcissist, bleh, can't talk. The narcissist is very clever at looking good especially at the expense of others. Being a narcissist is not a victimless thing because they have to put the blame somewhere. Unless they somebody actually saw you do it. And even then, they'll still try to put the blame elsewhere. Got to look good. Don't want people thinking negatively about me. My ego couldn't handle that even a little bit. Anyway, we're getting on past the 30 minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and call this video, pretty good video, uh, still trying to think of a video for Friday, it might be along the same lines, but uh, yeah, I've got 
pretty much the whole week thought up. I might be able to switch it and not do one for New Year's and then just do that one on Friday. Yeah. I just might have to do that. Anyway, if you've liked this video, or, or if you've enjoyed this video, I should say, go ahead and click the like button. You can also favorite it if you want. Ah, leave a comment down below or a video response. That would be nice because this is this is supposed to be a discussion, and I we can't discuss if I'm not getting feedback. And if you would like to keep coming back and getting more information, keep getting more information, or maybe you just like the sound of my voice, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>